welcome to another episode of Horror Blade. This is Young's. It's your girl Oral B. Not Mandy B, but Oral B. Mm, check the teeth, baby. Yes, that's right. It's Queen Latifah in the motherfucking building. Hi, y'all. I'm Weezy. Welcome back for another episode. It's a new year, new teeth. I don't really got all of it. Do. I guess no, it's a no new dude. A lot of people haven't recognized some me new friends. with my real hair out, which is crazy. I walked Looks right good. into my studio and they were like, hello. I was like, nigga. <laughs> so, yeah, me without braids, I don't know. We know it gives Puerto Rican. Oh, I can't um, wait. This year finna be the year of the lace wigs for me. Y'all about to see me with all the different styles, textures, colors. I ain't got it right now, but they coming. They Same coming. Kind. I'm ordering them right now. Same I'm kind. like, yeah, I'm it's like, a head okay. warmer. It's like let, a head. Let, let, let me do one from Alibaba, then let me get the expensive one. I'm going to mix the high and lows. You know what I mean? Y'all, we are joined today by a very special guest. I'm really excited because we're going to get into some shit. We have Samaya of Sexual <laughs> Essentials. Sorry, look, the new teeth, bitch. I, I ain't said too much <laughs> shit with the hands yet. <laughs> Sexual Essentials. Hello. <laughs> and Hi, also doing? the host of Not Just Another Sex Podcast. Shit's getting real. Hello, baby. Hello, darling. You should have been had a goddamn podcast, man. Yeah. We've now, been waiting. Now, you, so Maya, you know? I know that you wanted to come on Horrible for a minute, and what I knew about your brand was like, you were teaching people how to give good blowjobs? Yeah. I, yes. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> and then I remember you made a product. And that's what I know about sexual essentials. But what is sexual essentials? So sexual Well, first of all, hey, y'all. Hey. Queen Latifah. <laughs> Puerto Rican her. Ew. Okay. <laughs> Until it gets um, wet. Look at Thank you so much for having me. Um, sexual Essentials is a company that I designed to help people create the sex life that they want. Whatever that looked like. But what I realized was that a lot of people didn't have any of the tools. Like, everybody was kind of, like, talking or you could go hear someone talk about something. But people needed to practice sucking dick, riding, and everything else. Um, yeah, because so, we just talk over here. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we just talk over yeah, here. Yeah, we be using them. We be using them good knees. What would you do before you made that company? Real estate. Real estate. Wow. Suck so dick is fun, I guess. I do both now. Okay. So, she yeah. said I still sell the house. Yeah. In the house. No, no, no. I, I just, I did my own. Um, I got into real estate, like bought my own property and stuff like that. Congrats. Um, thank you. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. The the classes were always the thing that got me out there. Because they was like, wait, we really sucking dick in this class? What did they practice like, yes. on? What did they dildo. suck? A dildo. And they got to Why choose the size? Why not a vegetable? Why not a vegetable? Well... I don't know all the details about putting stuff in your coochie that ain't supposed to be there, right? Mm, so there's one. Thanks. And then also, like, your dildo, the ones especially that click on the wall, I like saving money and, like, stuff to be universal. Like, you could use it for more than one thing. Mm -hmm. So you could stick that shit on the wall in your shower and throw it back and practice throwing it back. Oh, you make them buy you the dildo first? No, I bring the dildo to the class. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So, like, y'all could have, like, a girl's now, night. Now, ma'am. What? I want to safety. Brand new. Wait, safety first, y'all. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it. It went viral, but I also follow... All the gays and all the OnlyFans people on TikTok and well and Twitter, but someone literally posted shattered glass, bloody feet, um, everything falling into their tub. Oh, that's Basically, right. From the suction they cup. were fucking. Shut they up. were fucking a suction cup in their shower, and I guess it fell. They fell. They busted the whole goddamn shower. You know where the so fuck safety, you at. So safety first. Well, Bitches, no, what? they don't. I it's feel wet. like people should know where they at. You know damn well. If you ain't got no stable ass shower, you Bro, need to be Bro, my shower doing caddy that. falls down. <laughs> and even, so I would not trust. A but you know that. You know that. But also even your wall. Like, I like the suction cup ones. And then, like, even if you send in, like, news to switch it okay. up, you can use your dildo to be, like, you know, deep thrown with it or even just playing with yourself. Like, you can use that for multiple things. So I like the dildo. Mm. The riding class Yeah, them good. things be giving M3 type of suction. <laughs> so I hope y'all have the color of your wall, the paint in a in a closet somewhere. Because it's giving the, that dildo about to grab the paint off the wall. Do you wall. know what my I'm suction so cup dildo looks like right now? It's in my guest room, which is also my, like, my closet. And it's stuck on the wall with necklaces hanging from it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Well, you said dual. You could use it you for multiple things. You can use it. It's you a great thing. Thing. You said multiple that. things. And you, you know said what? That. That's when I learned that people really did not know what the fuck they was doing. And so, like, even when, like, it was really bad. And I was like, okay, maybe the men ain't tripping when they saying, like, the women are lazy. But I think also some of the reason they were lazy because they really didn't know how to do it and, like, embarrassment and things like that. I think that. a lot of women lazy also just don't want to do it. Yeah, like, yeah oh. but also really didn't know. Like, I would always watch in the class, you got to suck dick before I teach you anything because I need to know. What you're doing. You know have, what I'm saying? I actually have a devil's advocate point of view on this. Hit me with it. <laughs> so, I do think 
you can teach someone how to suck dick. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think it'll be as good unless you actually like doing it. The one thing mm, I think you can benefit from from a class is most people probably don't like it because they're not good at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's a reason we all probably don't like to run because maybe we aren't <laughs> runner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you start working at the shit, then you're like, oh, now I need to go to the gym. With dick sucking, 100% that's it. Because I've recently been talking to friends about like about it and been shocked that they don't like sucking dick. I'm like, bro, what? I have a homegirl who's fine as shit. Huge titties, fat ass. And she said, I'm going to tell you something embarrassing. I said, tell me. And she was like, I'll be laying there, bro. Oh, pillow princess? Man. Yep. She was like, I There's even dick. an art to that. Like, there's even an art to there's the pillow princess. There's an art to just laying there? To the pillow princess part? What? You Girl, hold your You know, it, it's the desire. It's just like with sucking dick, it's the desire. If you, there is nothing sexier than when you're doing something to somebody and you could tell they really want it from you. Like, they they need that shit. Mm. Like, they're not keeping no cool about it. They they really want it. So, and even the desire of being able to lay there and just let a man do something to you, I feel like that's sexy as fuck. And I don't think a lot of people are even interactive when they on the bottom. But I've even had to practice my pillow princessness. No, because no, you're talking about two different things. I think because the pillow a princess ain't doing shit. But she, but you, but you her can, I can throw it back in dictionary. Ask, ask a man what they like the most about sex. It's your response. And a pillow oh, wait, princess wait, wait, means no, it ain't I, even I about. I do feel like I have to ask yeah, this question. Yeah, it ain't about. Okay, that's it a ain't fair about, one. It's not about like when I'm in my pillow princess mode. That means that I'm not picturing you. I'm you're there to to please me, and you'd be surprised how well they take direction. Like if you tell them go faster, like they like direction. They like being good at shit. Right. So you mm, laying there niggas. and not saying fuck them, but basically fuck them. Like right now, you are my toy. You know what I'm but saying? But also, like, ladies, be careful with the word deeper because that nigga might not have any more to give you. <laughs> he might not have no more to give you. Yeah. All here. right. Well, we're going to get into our dick. icebreaker. Deeper just means hit the pelvic bone if you really ain't got no dick. Oh, no. Don't hurt me now. I don't want my no, pelvic I'm saying, bone. Like, if they, they got a short do dick. What do mean when I say that's deeper? When you, you I don't even know. Deeper, you want to kind of... I, I'm trying to deeper. think. Do we mean it? Look at us. Do we even know what deeper mean. is? But, but we, you know, I'm trying to feel like... Right. I'm trying to figure out why Why do I be saying it? I'm like, when I say it in that moment. I feel like it's because you almost about to hit a spot. Well, I, no, I need I you to hurt. get to I wanted to hurt. I was about to say, if I say deeper, it's because at this point I want pain. Because mm. it's not a, it's not really enjoyable. Now, if the nigga's dick is little and it's just not even in there. But normally, when I say deeper or harder, it's because, okay, you now I want to hurt. Now I want some pain. Mm. Yeah. It's mm. never really about the enjoyment. I like the slow, rolling sex. Like, just... A good dick will get the job done. Dick. But when mm -hmm. I say like deeper and harder, it's definitely because I, I want some good some medium dick recently. And he hit a spot and I said, good for you. <laughs> What's Look, good medium gotta call dick? It good. Medium she, size? Is this the pencil That's why medium dick. No. Oh. Medium dick is very versatile. It is my I favorite. I was just riding when the too fuck big. out of it though. And that part was kind of fun. I really like riding. I like riding too. It's better. I, like, I realize a medium it dick is. can hit me. I feel like that's your part where you really get to talk your shit. Let's be sitting on the couch. I ain't riding shit. And really, I'm just and sitting on the And all this ass, so that's really, really ain't even really right. I just want to sit right. at the you edge of the bed. You said you seen the ass, that ain't right. I'm just sitting. That ain't right. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> well, let's get into our icebreakers. It's this or that. We're going to run down this quickly because <laughs> clearly you done came in with all the sauce. So, broke big dick or rich little dick? Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to say mine. <laughs> for just sex? We, we already for, know For just these. sex? For, for sex. Bro, yeah. big dick. Absolutely. Oh, Bro, well, then for just sex. Everybody's going to say that for just sex. Okay, so rela relationship. I'm going to go with the rich little dick. Wait. What? I, I will. Yeah. So I'll, you'll go I'll long will. term with a rich little dick over a broke big dick. Yes, because, okay. I mean, if you know what you're doing sexually, it really doesn't matter the size. I've had some of the best orgasms in my life from a small dick nigga. Well, yeah, because they be... They, they, they do better. a lot. The, they do, the do toys, a lot. They, they know they got to do more, but also, like, when you're fully aroused. Girl, you be getting fingered that, and fucked at the same oh time. Oh, my God. They be like, let me, give you, <laughs> let me suck some more up in that pussy for you. When you, when you do, um, when the pussy is, like, fully aroused, it swells up so much. So, you know how, like, when you've been real horny and somebody put their fingers in you and that shit feels good. Think about it. Look yeah, how it small does. your, your goddamn fingers. finger is. Right. So, when you get really, really aroused, and I feel like when you with somebody that's super small, they usually know that they small. So, the, the um, foreplay be a fucking one, they be eating pussy like crazy. So by the time you sticking the dick in anyway, my pussy just hella ready. Now, quickies and shit like that, we may not be as good with because yeah. I need more time to get there. But I would rat I'm gonna find a way to get everything I want. And a small dick nigga can use toys, use everything. I do a good leg Bro crossover where I like I hold them together and let them get in there and I'll be like, all right, let me Oh do yeah, crisscross your legs so it feel a little tight. I feel mm -hmm. I do that too, even yeah. with big dicks. All right. Uh, oh, you gotta do that shit when you throwing it back, like kind of Oh, I Close love your to, like, thighs, I like, like to open it up a little bit. Like, let me let you see it. 
I feel like, I feel like the thighs, like when you kind of like clap on it and then throw it back. Like it, See, you no, my problem with doing that with a little dick, though, the nigga don't know whether he's in my pussy or my thighs. No. So that's a real little that's, that, that's a real, real problem. That that's is. a real problem. Now, which of the these are two two bad, awful things, but would you rather <laughs> car sex or shower sex? Car sex. Over shower sex. Okay. Girl, I'm too big to be falling. If I fall in the shower, <laughs> okay. I, I do not enjoy shower. I don't that, enjoy water sex. Yeah, cool, you need beach, lube in jacuzzi. There. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, not mad. And the last yeah. one, only because you a nasty freak and we gonna get to it. <laughs> Would you rather golden showers or bukkake? What's bukkake? What? Oh, bitch, you talk sex and don't know bukkake, and I said it because you like MMF threesomes. What's so it? bukkake is getting ejaculated on by multiple dicks. Oh, absolutely not. No, no, no. Piss on me. <laughs> You'd rather have piss? <laughs> I'd rather have piss. Because even in my in, in my male, male, female threesome fantasy, it's all like worship. So it's very much so. I'm oh. not even, I don't even want to suck you dick You don't even in care my if male, they come. I ain't going to say that. But, <laughs> so, but I, I, but you don't so, want I want to be catered to. I want to be catered to. Some more sensual. And I can't imagine multiple dicks nothing on me being like the if central it part of my. Slow, I don't understand kind of how the piss gives more cater than the cum. <laughs> Honestly, depending on who you fucking, how nasty you be, you be like, I don't give a fuck what you do to me. So you have been peed on before? Nah, but I would. I mean, I ain't against, like in the shower, right? So you haven't done any of those? Not in the shower. Nah, I ain't, I'm not really on bodily fluids like that. Okay. Not yeah. even semen? No, nah, I mean, I'm fine with it, but she has between the two. And my male, male, female threesome is like me being like, goddess like aphrodite type shit like you serving me like y'all are serving me with this but sex so why would you be nothing on me it seems no, way more on? like degrading to me than come because we can we, we get come on the regular <laughs> well technically piss if you are and fun if fact you drink here, a lot of water well not only that if you are stuck <laughs> in like a desert or stuck on an island somewhere they actually say that you can drink your own piss and you can survive off of drinking. Your I don't own know piss. where this, why this was relative. Well, because I'm she made one of like y'all. She just a snap of that. Neither one of them. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying it messes up my, it messes up my male, male, female three, threesome fantasy. Okay. okay. The fantasy is like super sensual, and y'all nothing on my well, face. I'm nothing sensual about you that. You said you're not That's... drinking. You changing your lifestyle. You said Bu- I gotta drink the well, pee. Well, well, no, Bukaki, <laughs> Bukaki is good for protein. At this point, let's yes, you gotta drink it, bitch. God why damn I gotta it. drink? No, I don't want to drink it. So no you don't want to do nothing. I wouldn't want to drink it either. Well, no, I don't want to drink it. Y'all could piss on speaking me. Speaking of bodily fluids, our <laughs> vanilla shit this week um, is quite crazy because, of course, the um, uh, SM, BDSM, nasty free codes have landed on TikTok. Not a surprise, but I wanted to share two of these trends that have actually they landed. They're about to be gone. That have landed to TikTok. That is nuts. Um, this one specific TikToker. Um, Bakes sourdough bread using her own vaginal yeast. That is correct, y'all. Um, mm. Thanks to feminist blogger Zoe <laughs> Savry, definitely giving quite. Um, after getting a pretty Ugh. bad yeast infection, was inspired by the idea to turn her discomfort into delicious baked goods. Never have I ever seen my own <laughs> discharge and thought, this mm. is icing. <laughs> Let mm. me put it in a dish. Waking up on Saturday with the familiar itchy Ugh. Bernie Fanny, I giggled to myself. Not familiar. Maybe I could make bread <laughs> with that. And that ticked into, well, I've always wanted to try making my own sourdough anyway. Now, what do you do if it's in high demand? I mean, it doesn't say she sells it. She did say. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. She got curious. If somebody wants the bread again and you like, well, damn, my shit kind of got better. But if you ready, <laughs> listen, this is how she did it. She said she got curious. And the next thing that happened was. She scraped white goop off of a dildo into a bowl and mixed it with flour and water. This is so nasty. <laughs> I think the the nastiest thing we ever did was the shit in a pussy thing. The no, Alabama this hunt. is pretty fucking bad. It says the yeast from her vagina is no less gross than any other yeast that we use to make bread, she says. Making sourdough starter entails uh, yeah, the <laughs> I mean, it's her own. If she's eating it and not selling it, if it's her own, I, I am less judgmental. But I ain't gonna lie to you, a little bit of judgment came up there. But I do things with my juices. Well, so real quick I'm too, not, she also yeah. like taste them. I mean, yeah, yeah I, taste I my mean, juices. do you your I, juices? Do you do it with your yeast and your bacteria? Not. Your vagina? Bacteria is the absolutely problem. Not. Yeah, it's it's like it's it not is the, the good bacteria. stuff. It's not the good bacteria either. That's this is a is. whole infection. I like I would like to you are cooking with judgmental. Infection, Yo, but. speaking of good bacteria, <laughs> the medium nigga that I fucked recently. He said something to me that really had me concerned for women. 
Now, uh oh, I would assume being that he's rich, he fucks a lot of bitches, and he definitely does. So we get done fucking, and he says how he couldn't believe how wet I was, and he was like, I always felt like we were gonna have good sex, and like I knew you had good pussy, but like that was like a lot. Like I'm shocked, and I said, and he's like, you got good pussy. I was like, it was just good because it was wet. I'm ovulating. He was like, nah, because wet pussy ain't always good. It be stank. And I'm like, nah. Nah. That ain't That's true because I fuck bitches. He said, it's literally 50 50 for me. He said, the more juices and like wet a girl gets, the more sticky it is. Like all of that. He's I like, I mean, there's more sex musk. You know there what I'm saying? Is sex musk. musk in the air. I have a but... musk. That nigga said, stank. Yeah, no. But you know what? Nick Cannon did say the same thing when he was talking about uh, oh, 85% yeah. of women. But it's like a lot of men still, oh, for whatever reason, mind you, you done had 12 babies in like the last two years. So you ain't having no, you ain't you know stopping, I mean? ain't stopping So you shit. also are not using condoms clearly with all these different women that you're fucking. <laughs> it's and, that's, and that's what men don't know. Y'all dick is the reason why our pussies be sank. If you really want to know, if it be sank, nine times out of ten it's because of the partners that we're engaging with. And I've said it all the time. I knew my last nigga was for me because he ain't fuck up my pH. I said, oh, you I'm going to give it half and half because I, I eat pussy. So I, I eat pussy too. We all eat oh, pussy. Oh, yay. High five. Hello, girl. We be eating <laughs> pussy in here. I don't come across that many stank cooches. And I, I mean, don't I've either. also I never don't. eaten. I feel like I've also never eaten no pussy that was like, I ain't gonna say fresh out the shower, but it ain't like it's been all day. But pussy. I'm gonna say this: I think oh, men. You've never men, eaten I think all day we've had that experience no because men are pussy. thinking pussy's supposed to smell different. Right. You, you think never so? ate all day pussy? I thought mm -hmm. grown. I had a girlfriend. I eat all day pussy. I've never ate all day pussy. I ate pussy in a strip club on the floor. I talked about this on the pod. We was outside clubbing. It was like four o'clock in the morning. I ate my homegirl out in the strip club in the private room on the floor. I've never eaten. All oh day yeah, pussy. it was all day. All now night if you with me, now if you with me, like. And we in the house type thing What's all, all day. What's all day pussy? So now, I, like, I didn't since, have that like, pussy. Like, if, if it's in the morning, I don't eat after the club pussy. Like, you got to shower first. Like, I wouldn't oh, want I nobody to eat my... Club. It wasn't it's, after. It was, it was in the club. It was I don't want nobody eating my pussy after I left the club. I'm going to be self-conscious. I don't like, like my th I got thick ass thighs. Like, I'm not saying y'all don't. But you know what I'm saying? They doing like this. Got a little sweat. Like Wash your hands. Take a little wipe. Bitches be having wipes in their bag and stuff. I'll give a nigga a, a fucking wipe. baby wipe pussy. Queen. I like it fresh. Yeah, I like man being fresh too, though. Because they be sweating and shit. She just said, would you give a nigga baby white pussy? Because I be giving niggas baby oh, white pussy. Oh, yeah, I would. So you wouldn't eat baby white pussy? <laughs> I eat it all the time. I would eat baby white Every pussy. Every time a bitch like, come to my house like and go to the bathroom, should... I know that's what's going on. I f <laughs> it's baby white pussy. <laughs> I be like, they're, they're in there. <laughs> she got her put up on the... On the... <laughs> I mean, I get it, but I just, I don't want to be in one of them situations where I'm like, baby, I'm not eating this. You're going to have to go shower. Like, it's going to be so awkward. That would suck, bro. It would suck. I mean, I wouldn't stop talking to somebody. From, I think it's normal. Like, sometimes your pussy stink. Like, when my shit expire, I'm going to go get in a shower. But when my shit expire, we going to pass on tonight until I figure out why it's expired. I, oh, I need to go I buy some new I just think sometimes, like, during the day it expires. It's just, it's just time to get in the shower. Oh. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about that. Like, also... A way to keep your pussy, like, no lie, like, just smelling the best that you can through all day pussy, you got to really wipe when you pee. You do. Yes. And you need to stay on that pee. toilet for a while. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Like, let, like sometimes. You got to kegel after I'm, you pee and let the. Shit come out. Let the, well. Does it still be in your panties? <laughs> and, you know. And if you got a fat wash. pussy, too, sometimes I got to, like, really, like, open the Get lips and, like, take like the this. tissue yeah. in between. Be careful, because I don't know if y'all saw the other video that went viral. There's niggas that believe. When bitches is on a period, they got to remove their tampon to piss. They think it comes out of that hole. Uh, did y'all see that? Yeah, I, I did see that. It's it's nuts. These men don't even know us. So, yes, just I, I, make I gotta, sure you sit and I shake. I have to say, though, like, that isn't surprising. Women got to shake like how men shake but, their But women don't be knowing how many holes they have. Like, I, I don't either. think that men thinking mm. that is surprising. Like, no. I think not knowing a clit is surprising, but that, no. It's a lot of if stuff people don't know. Eating pussy, I need you to know there's two holes down there. Look here, I be really turning on the lights. Like I like to have classes when I'm having sex. Like let's talk about it. Everybody vibe ain't gonna be sexy as fuck. Like some people's kind of like we inquisitive and shit like that. But I'm okay with an educational fuck me session. What do you mean? What kind of stuff do you like to teach? Well, if I was eating your pussy, I would be like, like talk me through it. Like how do you how do you like your pussy eating? I don't oh, just talk me through it. You yeah, know. like talk me through it and like I oh. do that once it's in my mouth. <laughs> Like, I'm not about to do it, like, <laughs> as we're sitting on the edge of the bed. No, no like not Netflix. sitting on the edge and of the bed. Like, no, but no, keep the lights on, like, while we into it. Like, while we into it, I, I like education. I'm a nerd. I like educational things. It depends. I do. Some people, yeah, I feel I like you can. Yeah, I don't know one direction like that. 
You don't? I'm going to just moan. I'm going to let you know you're doing a good job. If I motherfucking hold your shit. head there. Now, if I hold you to stay down there and then I do like some wrestling move where I move my leg and I put it over your neck like, nah, nigga. <laughs> this stay you need right to be. the fuck there. And then I moan. But like, I'll do them type of movements. Like, it's giving wrestling moves. To let you know you're doing a you're doing a good you're job. Doing, bitch, you're, you're doing, doing a, a good, good job. job. <laughs> look, here, look here, I will say I have stopped talking so much shit about this stay right there because somebody hit me with the stay right there and I was like, oh my God, my neck about to fucking break. <laughs> like, bitch, I yeah. Hate like that at shit. this moment. <laughs> well, I make sure they're not in an uncomfortable position. I do I ain't gonna lie to you, I don't. I did I do then want to go into that. You said that almost happened. We have a new segment that was introduced called uh -uh. Horror Stories. And I would love to know if you have a horror story whether dating or in the bedroom i do oh give it to us I do. you guys ever use a glass dildo yeah i love glass dildos. icicles double yes. double 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 dildo and i have never though put it in the freezer or changed the temperature but i have used it. and that that That's is it. one of the i like them they're really clean they, they they are, are clean. you always they ain't got no pores on like no yeah. pores mm -hmm. on it so um you know fucking with black men sometimes the dick don't go in your ass um, it's just too big, and, and right. it's okay. I love that for y'all, but <laughs> so all it's not for everybody. Um, so I was, you know, doing a um, like some clit stimulation with with a guy, and we used a glass dildo, and you know, and I'm talking about shit felt amazing, literally, ironically, and like I'm having an orgasm. So like I'm using the clitoral stimulator on my clit, and then he's like fucking my ass with the glass dildo. So it feels amazing. I'm like, okay, yeah, we that need actually more. Feels, it feels mm, so. Can, f first of all, mm. anal orgasms are. Yep, I've I've shared my experience. They're, oh my, they're out of Honestly, this world. Oh when my out of this world, how they squirt? Like no, the it's out men, of this world. It's a thing. Like out of this Ain't, world. Like women can you, get there too. If you put your finger like even in my ass, the way my pussy responds, I ain't never I seen it. no shit like that. Like. Anyways, yet again, ironically. <laughs> and so then I start smelling something and I'm like. Oh, oh no. Wait. You, you know, like that lip quiver, like, oh. Because he's fucking your ass. With, and, and he's now he's watching. He ain't and even using dick. He's, and I'm I'm oh, on no, the edge of the bed. Legs up. It. So and mind you, he was like an older guy, like, and he's very mature <laughs> and he ain't say nothing. And so we and we had the towel out, like, you know, next okay. to it. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I looked and like he had, he had pulled it out and it was like shit everywhere. And he was like, it's okay. I'm not. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get you out. You told me to get out? I told him not like out of the house, but out of my room. Like get out, close the door. Like, like I got to. pulled it out. And it was, it, he saw it. Like it he knew a... what I was about. I was about to freak the fuck out. Like I'm how, not. How much shit was it? It was. Oh, um, like a, it was an amount. More than Medina's? More... Well, was it a skid mark or was no, it like a shit No, it was shit. an amount. It was a like he pulled a whole turd out. No, not a whole, t but it's <laughs> it, it, it was like a shark, like but like so much. Wait, it was what? like no, 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 it wasn't. Oh, like, it was but thick? like an amount. Oh, it was so big. It was oh, pudding. It was <laughs> oh, you had chocolate pudding pulled out your ass. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. It was on. The, it was all over the towel, and like I felt it like on my like on the back of my. Oh, it was oh, a lot. I was like, oh, oh my god, oh my god. So I'm mortified, bro. I'm like. I, this and I did the things. I went to the bathroom. I ain't eating nothing, no Chipotle. Like I did. But, but and I had the never... real question. After the shit. He was so fine. He was like, it's okay. But and did was... you? No. Did y'all go back so y'all didn't fuck again? Yeah, we fucked again. Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, in that moment, I definitely freaked out. And I was like, yo, like, I'm in the bathroom. I'm like, ain't no way. Like, I got to get in the shower. Like, this was just so awkward that it happened. But I'm the one who handled it, like, I don't terribly. know how to bounce back from shit. I was not going to lie. Well, if I was that shitty... Brain check. <laughs> not that I, I wasn't shitty though. That's you, why I like. Was shitty. I was <laughs> <a> child, <laughs> <bitch>. Clearly, I, <laughs> but he was in there. Like that was the most. Also, that was the most anal I had ever had because, of course, with a real dick, you know they going slower. You being oh, yeah, careful. He, Sometimes it's not even a whole dick in there and it feels great. But with the glass dildo, it was smaller, so he all up in. And I mean, yeah. we going, going, and I'm like, this had to come out before this. Why you ain't stop? He no, was bitch, like, you he was, was having you a were colonic he with didn't that dildo. Care. <laughs> he just didn't. <laughs> Get off my phone. Get, 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 he just, he just did You know how care. I know this happened? One of my friends. That's kind of hot, though. Who shall remain nameless, <laughs> was constipated, does not have sex toys, okay? This person was like, so I had got food poisoning recently on vacation. I was like, bro, I've never shit so much. And he was like, the opposite shit happened to me. And I was like, what happened? He was like, bro, I could feel that it wouldn't come out. I had to use a toothbrush. Excuse me? Wait, what? He said he Googled. <laughs> Wait. What you have to do oh, no. to break up the shit? 
And he told me he put a toothbrush in his ass. To break up being constipated? So that he could shitty There is medicine for that. There is so There's many more. So many <laughs> options. There's a lot of he options said, before a toothbrush. He called sites for a toothbrush. were recommending skinny objects. That was white people's sites. He ain't go to. He went everywhere, but <laughs> Bitch. his iPhone, his algorithm is I different. I mean, he could even use one of them little baby basters. You know what I'm saying? Where they be sticking in um, your booty. How and, about and the lunches? nasty ass, pink ass Pepto Bismol, bitch? They got medicine. He, he was fucked up. There is med there are pills wanted, that work in like we six in a, hours. We were in a, like a text thread, and he was like, "I was like, how you feel it?" And he was like, "Day two and no shit." And he's three. flexible as fuck. You know, it's given that he just wanted to stick something small up his ass, but it's cool. He was I thought about that. He said it came out right after though. I'm I sure bet it did. did. <laughs> he loosened <laughs> right there. Okay. It loosened it um, right I up. Bet I bet the the it did. Just like yours. When, no. Come on, man. That shit came See, right shit, out. I always gotta come back around. Like, I've done this shit before. <laughs> well, we know that clearly you into all the kink stuff. We have a segment called Hors d'oeuvre, and we need for you to give us a sex tip. And at this point, no sex tip on anal sex because I, I think you need to find <laughs> some tips on your own. Um, but if you could give us, you know what? I want to spruce it up a bit. Any, okay. any sex tip that aligns with a specific kink or fetish. So if you can even maybe say what the mm -hmm. kinker fetish is and then go into a sex tip for that. Let's make it real kinky. Damn. I sound like school. All right. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> I don't know if it's going to do any things, but these are my tips. God okay. Damn. All right. So my tip is when somebody gives you a kink, right, a lot of times we think about the extreme. We mm. go real. We go to 100, right? Yep. And what I want to encourage people to do is figure out what does that kink look like in a smaller capacity. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you're having a threesome with somebody, um, whenever I've had a threesome with my partner, I fantasized vocally with them in bed about the person that we wanted to have a threesome with. Like, if it was a person that we knew. I've right? done that. You know? Okay. And so what happened, like, I fantasized about friends. Thanks, friend. Um, <laughs> about all kind of things. Like, and they, you know, we talking about it, like, because I don't know if I actually want to have sex with my friends sometimes with with my dude you mm. know what i'm saying single right now don't get that confused um but you know what i'm saying some of those settings um also hiring people for the kinks of course that you want to do mm. um so i have this thing where i'm getting into where i kind of want to do like a dominatrix like study that right um but one of the ways that i've been practicing that is just hiring a submissive to clean my house um where do you just but so why do you need to hire them if that's what a lot of them it's can a do different. If it, I don't have to commit, it's a, it's different a experience. service. Yes, and versus when you're someone's dom, um, dom, mm -hmm. you have to. You're really serving them. You know what I mean. But me getting more comfortable with wanting to how I talk to people. Like I'm a pretty polite motherfucker. Like I'm really nice. I, I might be able to introduce you to one. I had a sub that offered mm. to come, and he was like, "I'll just clean your house. I'll rub your feet. I'll do all these things." And you know, I'll just do whatever you want me to do. And he just wanted to serve me. I had actually met him at a at a Fed dinner. And I was like, um, I was actually, as much as I, I believe I'm a, a really dominant person in the bedroom, having an actual submissive mm. actually scared the fucking shit out of me. Why? I don't know. I was like, you want me to tell you to turn the lights on and off? And because, again, my mind went to the extreme, mm. like you're saying. So when he was like, I just want to come over and do your laundry and do all that. I was like, nah, there gotta be something else you want to do. Like, <laughs> what, what, what more do I have to do? I have to talk crazy to you. Do and there was just my mind went so crazy to where I was like, there's no way I could have a. Service. I feel like the second they're there, they're gonna want more. It's just like a nigga. No, come absolutely cattle. not. See? Absolutely wait, no? not. Not a sum. Mm -mm. So absolutely wait, not. They Submit come there. Real it's, it's nothing sex. No. It, it has, it's only what you want. They that their job is to do what you want. So like the reason that I like hiring a submit. So like even for the art exhibit, it's a live sex art show I put on. The you know if y'all doing an event you gonna get exhausted you not remember to drink no water to eat none of that stuff I hired um Buana Buana for the art exhibit he followed me around all day like he had uh, like he had the mask on and everything which turned me on just watching him in a suit and like this mask and That's hot. things like it was that very is. hot that um is. I even liked the fact that even me walking around and other men approaching me and it's like they're this man right here like like my almost like a security guard but. I don't know if I could commit to a, because even a dom sub relationship is a relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can commit to it. So even bringing that down a notch and saying, you know what, I'm hiring a submissive for the day and just even figuring out, I don't want to commit to shit until I know for sure what I like about this specific thing. Would you want that dynamic in a relationship or is this something you feel like you just get the urge from time to time to do? It depends because my, I cannot, I don't know if I can humiliate a partner. 
Mm. I don't desire that. Like for dating, like my black man, I could not imagine like talking crazy. Wait, to do him. you use white men submissives? No, but I'm saying like my the A man partner. I'm dating, like and forever and saying shit like I'm that. I'm saying because that's actually kind of fun. I would feel like you don't have to pay them. Po- <laughs> it's giving reparations. Reparations, <laughs> bro. Low key. I mean, I like felt reparations for that uh, But so also, real. you know, also <laughs> even just having me, I feel like as a dom is a treat, and I don't know if a white man deserves that type of treat, I like because right. I'm still, you know, even even in. I care. I can't fucking help it. I care. So even like being a dom or being forced for whatever, I have to say it to somebody who it does something for you. And there's a part of me that be like, okay, all your bitchiness is adding up. Where you going to put it? Where you going to put it? Because mm-hmm. I just, I don't like being mean to people for no fucking reason. Like I could be sarcastic and all this other shit, but like being a bitch for no fucking reason to people is lame as fuck. But like sometimes I have an urge and I don't want to care what other people think and I need a place to put it. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so dumping it off of somebody and they getting off on it because I'm talking to them like that, that feels good. And mm-hmm. I ain't hurt nobody fucking feelings. Like, sound like a good fucking day. <laughs> like, and then they be rubbing feet. Like at the they event, do. he was oh, taking that. off my shoes mm-hmm. and rubbing my feet at the event. Like, I will never do what was another- the event? Um, live sex art show. The art I'm not exhibit. gonna lie, oh, you do it in know. Atlanta. I want to come next to the next year. one. Yes, absolutely. Please, Medina What's it went. Like? Medina went and told me it was one of the best experiences. It was amazing. The the performers that you have and it just really upscale. And I yes. do the Fed dinners. I've invited people to New York. They just had one as well in Atlanta. But the way that she explained this art exhibit, she was like, first off, your mind is nuts. The way you what, what what is it? I don't know what it is. So basically, you you dress like it's a black tie event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this past one that we had was Harlem Nights theme. So I mean, we had That's the dope. old school Rolls Royce outside. We had the large letters. Like Love it's that. open bar. So I I'm teaching people to like if pussy in the room, it should be an expensive event. That's what it is. Like we don't you like yeah right so also it's a great event for beginners that are trying to get into kink Mm -hmm. or just intimacy and different things like that so you don't have to worry about taking off your clothes it's not a play party but we hire people that could headline their own show like so the last one we had sir marvelous um pure intimacy dash who does the erotic massages they've all been on the yes simone sky like and they're all performing at once so you're literally walking around the event and it's always masquerade optional if you want to no matter what theme it is you're walking around the event and you're watching these people have sex and like do different demonstrations and the music is up like it's porn and things like that on the wall you're walking around like in your tux with your partner and now y'all can like talk about like damn i like looking at that so like imagine if you if you weren't you know what I'm saying? Nasty as fuck. You would <laughs> <laughs> go with your partner, but now it's like it's totally safe because you were in a tux. You don't got to worry about getting... Well, no. I mean, just because I'm know, nasty as fuck doesn't mean I like you that You even kind want of your stuff. face or I don't, even want your I face like, out there. I um, sex clubs for that reason. Mm. Sometimes I get really overwhelmed um, with a lot of people that. there. And I'm a person that likes threesomes and all kind of nasty shit, but that being like in a everything. space of those people sometimes makes me apprehensive. So, yeah, I think and a it's really roped off. So, it's roped off. So, like, you... You don't have to worry about exhibit. anything. Yeah, it isn't. It's just like an art show, except mm. they're doing all kind of crazy, and it's so intimate. What's the craziest like, thing you've seen at one of your shows? <sighs> she booked it. Dash, I did. I be thinking shit like, I want to see. You was like, uh, so, I need you to do this. So Dash, um, for pure intimacy, she's the woman who did my erotic massage that ends with like a happy ending. Okay. So she did a new room massage with Simone Sky, and Simone Sky blew up to like top one percent over COVID on um, OnlyFans, and like she's so fucking gorgeous and just sexy and you know what I mean and so they put their acts together and she massaged her and they was eating each other pussy and just. It was so sensual. Like, mm. I'm, a, I'm, yes, absolutely. So, go ahead you and can, send that to me. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, sending that to yeah. you. I've been like, this um, is And if, y- if y'all yeah, listening, make sure you join my Patreon. Um, we did a we did a documentary on it, 45 minutes. And so, like, there were different interviews from the performers. And just, we oh, rented this, we rented this mansion for the day before. Um, and we had a um, topless pool party. So, that was like private um, and things like that. Oh, look, I love a good thing. Well, we're part of the one in 2023. Yes. 20- I love Might as well go. And put this out there now. Uh, 2023, it will be in Atlanta again this of year. We just be. did. <laughs> I know, right? Hello. All the moves are sending me right to Atlanta. So um, this past year was in Houston. We did Atlanta before, but we're gonna have to bring it back. So I need a big enough space because now I've been talking about it everywhere, and people are like, oh yeah, it's gonna be big. Yeah, enough. Like, like, so like it's up. a cigar Maybe roller there. Nice. Um, we'll figure it out. A new like he's a he's a cigar rolling like he has the the suit like the feather like the whole set that's like the thing. everything. When did we ever get a chance to go to prom? The fuck, I like, love it. 
It's like a girl. I love a prom. good black tie event. I do because you don't really get because a horror prom. And I ain't gonna hold you. I, I be, <laughs> and I be confused right. when I hop on that fashion nova. I be like, where the fuck is somebody wearing a sequin gown? To? But buy it. Where the fuck? But but now they birthday dinner. You know what I mean? Because I'll be tired it, of seeing a bitch. Birthday. It I is am so tired dinner. of seeing bitches with Look sequin here. fucking gowns on we a need, random Tuesday for their birthday. We doing so many more events that are like luxury and nasty. Like I just feel like it doesn't have to be. A lot of it times I don't like raunchy. it. Doesn't that's that's why I don't or fuck with the sex club or, too much because it's I'm gonna not. I'm gonna take you to one. Oh well, you leaving? Well, damn, I, I would have taken you to. When, when damn, you was working this weekend. God damn. <laughs> next time, next time, bitch. Next time, you was working this I, weekend. I'm putting. All right now. Yeah. Oh no, I'm the. I'm. I take everyone on field trips to sex clubs when they come to New York. Okay. Not the followers. I know y'all gonna be it's like black people. The way. Oh, there's an all black one right in mm. Brooklyn. Yes. I'll take you there. It's great. Uh, shout out to Susie. This happens every week. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> I so love excited. it. I'm not trying to not be enthusiastic. I love it. I love it. Like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Here we go again. Um, well, I did want to, before we get into our horrible decision this week. Okay. I want to give a trigger warning um, for anyone who has experienced any sort of sexual assault. Um, only because the horrible decision this week specifically um, goes against it. We had to have this conversation because horrible decisions over the last six years we talk about no kink shaming. Um, we talk about sexual liberation. We talk about um, really owning the things that you like. And unfortunately, a lot of people associate kink and things with fetish and things in the bedroom like, well, something bad had to happen to you for you to mm. like it. Um, and I've always sat on this couch and was like, the things that I like have nothing to do with assault. I do the things I want to do because I want to do them. Um, and I don't think we've had the opportunity to acknowledge that there are some people that have a, an affinity for certain kinks and fetishes that are closely attached to sexual assault or traumas or things from their past. Yes. Um, and when I knew it. you were coming to New York, this was a topic that you were willing to open up about because it's something that you're dealing with in therapy. And I wanted to kind of go through your three kinks and how you found the connection to them with your trauma and how you kind of work through it without being triggered. Absolutely. Um, if you mind. Um, and the first one only because we talked about it already. That was so well said. Thank you. <laughs> it's the duality Thank for you. me. <laughs> I be trying, girl. I be trying. And then, you know, I say the N-word every other sentence and the B-word, but whatever. Um, so the first one is actually, and we haven't really gotten into it, but you enjoy joining couples. I do. I have a thing for couples. Like So unicorn style... Also, how do you approach couples? Let's get into, A, maybe your first time joining a couple and how you approach a couple like, I want both of you. <sighs> <laughs> For me, it's always started with the woman. So, um, but more than anything, I'm attracted to love and mm. real love. I can tell when I'm around somebody and you, and I'm not talking about like, oh, y'all always getting along. I'm talking about real love, which means that I know that like if I feel like if the the husband was to try to hit on me in a way that made me feel like your wife would be uncomfortable with this, I'm totally turned off. Like oh. I don't like things like that. I don't like no shady shit. The point is, is that it's already controversial as fuck, and I'm not yeah. about to feed into that because it's making it harder for me to get it. Right. Couples that you know, are in love are very sexy. Oh my god! Very sexy. Because like, the thing is, when you feel like I don't know, to, like I think you look at how attractive someone is first, right? And then their dynamic is truly what makes you want to fuck them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, uh, beyond a sex club thing, of course, of something with just vanity. But, like, yeah, you want to join in on that shit. It's just, like, friends. If I'm out or something and I see a group of friends having a good time, I feel that energy. Yeah. So I think, for sure, couples don't realize what they put off. Like, when dudes are the ones that ask for it, you can always tell. Yeah. You know I what I mean? When I can the tell woman when your woman is uncomfortable. When, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. First of all, I'm I'm really not trying to put down another woman or anything like that. But also, I'm not trying to come in here to fuck up anything. I'm also looking for a certain void to be filled, right? Mm. Which is what I realized. Watching a healthy parenting and loving situation is something that I realized I want to believe in. I'm a hopeless fucking romantic, or at least a hopeful one. And so watching other people in love, I can admit like where I haven't been great at it. And I can also admit that I haven't seen a lot of great examples. But when somebody, it's almost like with yourself, when when you're more whole and things like that, you have more to give other people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when couples are whole together, despite like their issues, they're able to offer me something which is just caring for me as a normal fucking person and not making me feel crazy because I'm attracted to both of y'all. And um, that comes from which trauma response? I feel like it's definitely the wanting to feel one included by a woman, 
right? Um, I feel like growing up, there's a one of the hard truths about like growing up with a parent molesting you is that there becomes almost like a rift between you and your mom because now she's kind of diminishing you so that way because her husband is attracted. Mm. So I become the other woman in my own home growing up. Like there were certain times I could definitely feel that my fire was kind of being put out because don't wear this and don't wear that. But I would go to other people's homes and they could, I'm like, you can wear that at, at your house. But I realized I'm growing up wow. in a house where, you know, if your dad is molesting you, then it's, oh, don't put this on. Instead of us dealing with it properly, it's, wow. oh, don't put this on, right? And so, or either you're fast about everything. When, when you're a certain age, liking <laughs> the opposite sex or liking anybody is normal, right? So being around a couple and them not making me feel like a whore or making me feel like, oh, you like my hood? You know what I'm saying? And not making me feel like that, it makes me feel included. It makes me feel included with another woman. It makes me want to rebuild the trust that I have with women. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, it also gives me hope with men and they stay the, like, when they're honest with their wives and like, no, mm. like, I love when I can talk to a man about why he loves his wife mm. and we have sex off of that. Like, and him thanking me, like, I love how you show up for her and vice versa. And them being happy for each other, like a level of compersion. Um, the best, the best couple that I've dated thus far, unfortunately, we're not together anymore, but I have nothing but great things to say about them. And like what they had, they were really good with compersion um, and just being happy for each other, getting something else like your partner can't give you everything. Right. And they always are going to get it from their friendships or whatever or whatever. But we were getting it in this dating way. And I saw them even come into a new stage of their relationship together. There were things that she had been trying to explain to him for years that the, when I explained and hearing a new voice in a different perspective that he, he was got like, it. I got to level up on this. You're right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Why so that's, break up? what's the tea? What's the tea? Oh, everything don't always last. <laughs> compatibility. I, I need more compatibility. Like I like to travel and I want, I want to be able to live my life like kind of like mir not mirrored with someone else's, but we have to be able to do the same things. And would you want to be in a throuple? Um, like what you mean as my only relationship? Yeah, it depends. That means like I would I would be open to that. Okay. I would be open to it. But <clears throat> as a poly, I can't never say that everything is always off the table. But it's always about like me getting the things I need. But I was really good there, like. For a little bit. Like okay. I was getting out, you know, three people. Well, that's a lot. That's a that's lot. A lot. That's no, a I've, lot. Been, I've been through it too. It's a lot. But that's it's a lot. super, it's super intimate and it makes you discuss the things that I really want to say. So like one of my favorite things like with the couple is like laying back between one of their legs while the other one is like, you know, doing whatever and me thanking them. Like, thank you so much for letting him fuck this fuck me like this. Like, thank you so much. And like Ooh, her kissing me. All right. And, you know what I'm saying? And like even just asking, asking him, like, oh, what that pussy feel like? And like you know what I mean? And them not having to hold back. You know what I mean? It's almost right. like the comfort of even masturbating in front of your partner. You know how awkward that is. Like, even if you are okay with it, yep. it's still awkward. But doing that and having the permission of your partner to enjoy yourself um, and requiring you to enjoy yourself, you know? Like, it's a whole nother level of intimacy. But it does something for me. It's like, it feels like even the way that they coddle, and not just that, but almost all couples that I'm attracted to, the way they coddle me and help me and to grow. You know, they're proud of me. They want to hear great. what I'm doing because they already got their own life. Yeah, they yeah, already they love each other. They already got their own money shit going on. So it's like, we're here for you. We're proud of you. Like, what you're doing by yourself. Is there we, a time frame of a relationship know? people have been in that you've noticed is, like, more stable for wanting to join in? I've only fucked with people that have probably been together, like, 10 plus, 15 plus five, years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a good tip, but, though. I, I, I've but I like people too. that are in love and comfortable. There's, like, a lot of, there's a lot of couples in the space. I, I know even when we went to hedonism, people were like, yeah, we've been here 17 times. And <laughs> like, like yeah. even even in the sex space, like the couples are, are normally, they've been together for a while. Yeah. Like it's, you could tell. You know, you could I'm, tell. I'm the only newbie around. Uh, <laughs> look here. I mean, yeah. he, um, he now, was you, you talked about joining in on couples. You also have an affinity for MMF threesomes. Yeah. And I've partaken in it. Love it. Don't really get to do it as much as I absolutely would want to. I've never had My partner one. wasn't interested in it. But I wanted to know, in what way does your fantasy of MMF threesomes and partaking in MMF threesomes come from trauma? So the first time that, and I've always said I've never had a male, male, female threesome. Um, and I say that because if it's not consensual, then that's not what it is. Mm. What it is is you've been raped. 
um, something happened unconsensually and I'm not going to call that sex. You know what I mean? And so um, in the instance that that happened, one, you know, that was difficult because I was trying not to blame myself. You know, mm. um, one, because I had snuck out the house to, you know, in high school, snuck out oh, the house. Girl, so it's y'all like, did it. we worried about, I'm worried about getting in trouble to the point that I'm not speaking up about my safety. Right. Um, and just being young, not having a proper guidance, you know, um, like, what do I do? And you just, you know, you bury that shit. You like, well, this ain't what I wanted. But what I did realize is that in my mind, it was like, damn, if this had happened a different way, I'm not totally against this and that made Mm. me feel fucking disgusting because I was I did not like the situation right you know and then hearing men always say that something is a train bitch my situation was rape you know what I'm saying so hearing somebody call your situation a train when it's like I didn't even fucking want this like it hurts and so that hurt even and like I said I'm a hopeful romantic I have a desire to see more than one man care about my safety to say that this is how you want it, okay, we're going to make sure you do this safely. Mm. Like, just as safely as, like, I'm about to walk you to your car, like, it's dark outside. I want to believe that you care more about my consent. I want to believe that you care enough about me that you can be gentle with this pussy, even though I want to experience it in a different way, that you'll be like, as long as you're safe, like, that matters more. I have to believe that that exists, Mm. you know? It does. So, like, and I know it it does. It it exists. It's out here. And I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about it having because I don't want to be triggered right right so it can't happen in any and people are like why does it have to be intimate because I've had it the other way and that's not that's that not that what wasn't I what I wanted but I realized like there there is nothing different than feeling safe around a man my fantasy for MMF is always like that I've had is always if I had a boyfriend mm-hmm. and I wonder if it is because I had the same situation like I lost my virginity in a rape and I oh, think I'm that sorry. I don't even count him as the guy. I call, like, if, if anyone's ever listening to the show and thinks that the person I'm running into sometimes at the club is the guy, no, he's the one, you know, I mean, technically we choose. That you chose. Right. Yes. But I think about that sometimes, like, mm, I wonder why I want it to be someone I'm in love with or a husband or a mm. boyfriend. And it must be something to do with safety. Something about, like, a man, his masculinity being bigger than talking about me. You know what I mean? Mm. Which is... Are you safe? Like, are you good? This the way you wanted it? Okay, are you sure you want it this way? Because it should be like that in other sexual scenarios, right? Um, but also me having the boss to say, what if this feels good outside of the situation that I had? You know what I mean? I don't want to X something totally out of my life because right. it went wrong. Like, you don't never not drive again because you got in a car. Well, some people do, but you know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. I don't, I don't want to live a life like that. And I don't want to, I don't think that it's right that I got to cut pleasure out of my life because you was a fuck nigga. I mean, like, I think it's definitely important you know? to, to talk. I like, my MMF experience was so great that one guy made me squirt in it and I was making all these noises and my guy was, got mad at him like, is you hurting her? What are you doing? And I Absolutely. said, no, it's good, it's good. He could keep doing it. <laughs> ah, Word, um, yeah. But we we checked in with each other. I was also high on edibles and had to be thrown into an ice bath. We ain't gonna talk about that. But it was a really good experience and we were able to talk about it even the next day. Like, we all went and grabbed breakfast and nothing was weird and it was yes. just like... I got I, to sit in the front seat, nigga sat in the back. That was great. I <laughs> but like that. it it worked out well. And I think that that's the thing too, to be able to talk about it before, to consent before, to know who you're bringing in, for the man to trust the person they're also bringing in yes. is very important. And then to still check in after. it's And during, you know, during. during and, after, and he did check in during. He threw me in the ice bath after because I couldn't <laughs> die because the nigga was still playing football. He said, oh no, bitch. <laughs> we not landing on TMZ. <laughs> uh, but... I, I think that's very important. And before we get out of here, there was one more. We're not going to get to home mail this week. But you talked about the difference between needing words of affirmation, mm-hmm. but also degradation and humiliation. And wanted to know those needs for those types of verbal um, words, I guess. Look at me trying to think of it. Right. Word, bitch, <laughs> no, I get, I get what words, you're saying. The bar, the, what, what you say out your mouth. No, I get and, what you're and saying. And what's the difference with the two? Needing words of affirmation and then the humiliation aspect. Um, So the words of affirmation, um, if I'm being honest, I feel like now that I'm a parent, I'm very aware that, overly aware, some of the things, and not some, but a lot of the ways that things were handled, you know, specific, I would say probably specifically more like my mom, the way that she was talking to us was absolutely out of pocket. Like, it's, and we ain't talking about like, oh, you didn't gentle parent me. We're not talking about that. We we're talking. You mean she called you a bitch and like, everything under the sun. Just as and an she adult didn't even, to a child. And you know what's crazy? She didn't even say bitch a lot. You know what I mean? Ooh. But 
actually saying things that, you know how mean you got to be that you're saying something that don't even involve a curse word, but you're saying something yeah. to put me down. Yeah. You're making yeah. me think less of myself when that has nothing to do with why you're mad. Mm. You know what I mean? And so what I've learned about trauma is that it's not just something happening bad. It's something happening bad while you're in a vulnerable moment, right? And then mm. you heal over it. So it almost scabs up. And so what I found is that putting myself in another vulnerable moment and then adding good things in helps almost undo and unlock some of that trauma. So words of affirmation during sex, telling me that I'm more than fucking good enough while you're fucking me and stroking me and telling me how proud you are of me and you've come so fucking far and I just fucking love you and then spitting my mouth. You know, it's Ooh, just so... Girl, all of that. <laughs> it's it's From a work perspective, but I want a nigga to be like, you killed that motherfucking podcast. <laughs> I think I might. I think I might. I think like, I might. Like, I'm so fucking proud of you. Like, I knew you was going to do that shit. Like, I see you. You know what I'm saying? Like, one, it's making me... Me not shrink. You're making me acknowledge in the most vulnerable moment. My 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 legs is fucking open. Pussy is popping. Shit is um, coming out. Sorry. Come on, oh, sorry. Man. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, it's bringing us back. That was, that was a good one. Shit is coming that, that out. That was a good bring it back. So that that was that was good. That, that was good. Uh, <laughs> but yes. You, and and in those moments, pouring something in. And so I even had to start doing it with myself because you don't want to get attached with somebody too much. So even while I masturbate, I've recorded things. I have this. Um, this masturbation like playlist or whatever Me words too. playlist yes so like it's a whole track list like on my Patreon you can listen to it when I was losing weight like what I was telling myself and Ooh, I how I was it. talking to myself and so more than anything I masturbate to my goal like everything that's bump that makes me like it, that was making me insecure you know um, and I found that it was making me stronger right mm. so there's just doing the opposite right intentionally um, and then uh, and like during sex magic Cause like with a dick, like you know, girl, you know that shit. You know you didn't felt a little. Here we go with this shit. Little Tinkerbell. Um, <laughs> so there's that, and then also me being comfortable with people not liking me, and sometimes somebody thinking I'm mean. If I'm asking for what I want, like sometimes I feel like I care so much that it's like, bitch, what do you want? What do you at? like? I'm trying not to be rude to the point that it's like, come on, girl, like what's up? Yeah. I, I want to get you what you need, like, and just me believing like I'm supposed to be here and. You know what I'm saying? Not feeling uncomfortable. I don't feel uncomfortable anymore because I know that what I'm asking for, I'm not asking for anything unreasonable, whether it's in a work setting, a relationship setting, or anything else. But when you feel like you're not worthy, you know what I'm saying? You're not comfortable with asking for things. Mm. So I feel like I just had to be better at practicing. So like hiring a submissive to, like I said, clean my house and things like that. Like I'm not talking to you nice. And I also realize, yes, yeah, sometimes I have an urge to not be nice as fuck. And that's okay. You know what I mean? It's a time place for everything. But that fear of like, being as rude, like my mouth is hurt people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I I don't ever want to make nobody feel like right. how I have felt, especially acting out of trauma. But I also realize some of the things that I desire, finding a proper place to do them. So like, for example, if you bossy, go manage some shit, right? If you organize, like, you know what I'm saying? Use right. the thing that either gets out of hand or is annoying to you or whatever and find a place to put it. And I'm going to always work through my issues through sex. It's a, But most of my issues started with sex and so i'd use it as an avenue to correct things you what know would what your mean? tip be to, to get us out of here what would your tip be to somebody who acknowledges that their kinks or fetishes are stemmed from trauma um what tip would you give to make sure that those aren't triggered well one i'm proud of you i'm proud of you for acknowledging that something that someone did to hurt you does bring you some sort of pleasure it it does something for you and you're deci you're deciding to not give up but go look at it again and fix their fucking mess something that they did to you so i'm proud of you for that for acknowledging and not trying to bury that shit because it comes back up and that's triggering um if you're looking for control there is none the best control you have is just accepting yourself whatever's happened in the past it's not because of you it's not your fault and i'm proud of you for fucking speaking up and it's going to be so much power that comes from that shit. So follow it. Like, you're looking at me. Like, this is me speaking up, being honest. Like, I'm on this podcast talking about stuff that I've never had to say out loud before. And a bitch ain't even crying messing up her makeup. I love okay? that. So it's, it's a Cheers time. Today. Like, do the fucking work and show up for yourself, for nobody else. But simply because imagine what could happen if you tell your story. You do all the things that somebody's trying to take from you. You know, just imagine what happens. Like, 
Now, real quick, I know y'all all love Samaya now. So, Samaya, <laughs> please tell them where the fuck they can spend their coins with you, where they can listen to your podcast, and where they can follow you on Patreon. Because, goddamn, bitch, you about to take everybody from it. Because, goddamn, you did that. Talk your shit. Talk your shit, sis. Oh, my goodness. Go ahead and let them know. Look here. Y'all can find me um, on Instagram at goodness sexual dot essentials go. they didn't delete me before but <laughs> sexual dot essentials is one of my pages right um not um not just another sex pod on instagram maya bugsy m-i-a-b-u-g-g-z-y um you can click any of those links in my bio and the sexual essentials.com is my website sign up for my patreon it's almost 300 classes workshop hands-on demonstrations documentaries a interviews a whole bunch of pussy magic shit on there oh, pussy magic. Um, thank you for being vulnerable with us by the way i know it's not easy to like tell stories and then it's just like sometimes we can tell it in the moment and then the day it comes out you're like oh my god what are people gonna say <laughs> and it's just like a lot and then you almost gotta relive it again so i appreciate it and absolutely i appreciate y'all I, I hell i reached out what years ago like oh we should ago. do this and, and then of course it made sense we were able to record on period sis because it was virtual absolutely everybody was virtual but i'm just glad that you made your Divine way up here and finally got to come man. on to horrible Divine decisions fucking t- and what a time like it's just if you ignore what has happened to you, if you ignore what you really want to talk about, you're going to push stuff that you really want away from you. I've been trying to get on this show for hell. It's like, these hoes be booked and motherfucking busy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you ought to be booked on your podcast. So, I mean, these are the facts. Go. These facts. Two things can be true. But we I'm going to be saying fucked. what... Like, I can feel we like the, the, rewards, the rewards that come from doing what you should have been doing, this is where space was made for me and I was available to sit in it. So yes. it's like, I really hope that y'all just... Do the work. Um, talk to somebody. Um, get in some motherfucking therapy because therapy get pussy be therapy, therapy yeah. pussy be slapping. So oh, that's what I'm uh, slapping uh, <laughs> uh, By yes. the way, guys, we are also on Patreon. So if you have not yet, please go over to our Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash horrible decisions. If you miss solo episodes, Patreon is where you're gonna get them. We do our most up-to-date episodes on Patreon. A lot of the times we're in studio, we wanna have guests and we wanna have it on great video, but we be at home and we be spilling the tea on the Patreon. So go on over. It's patreon.com backslash okay. horrible decisions. Y'all, until next time, this has been yet another episode of Horrible. This is yours. Bye. Peace. Thank you.